Hello fellow engineers and welcome back to Polybridge 2. Look at the weekly challenge, week 54 at time of recording. Now that means this game has been out over a year. <laughs> and oh my goodness, I've just noticed. Look, look at the lava. The lava's moving. The lava's literally moving. Has that always done that or is that new? That's got to be new. Anyway, the reason I'm back in Polybridge is a little birdie told me there's a whole secret game in this game. Uh, it's, it's sort of an easter egg that the devs put in that I did not know existed. Uh, but if you add into workshop, and then so this is the normal sort of workshop thing. It's got popular levels. It's got the most recently played. But down here, can you see there's a little flower? And when you sort of mouse over that, can you see it, it lights up. This is a secret like no other. This is Polybridge 1, but within Polybridge 2. It's got worlds 1 to 7, and then all the levels from Polybridge 1 but with Polybridge 2 physics. So we are playing Polybridge 1 inside of Polybridge 2. This is Polyception of the highest order, but we're going to start Alpine Meadows, which is World 1. Uh, we're going to go we're going to go straight from the start. But first a quick word from today's sponsor, Free Trade. Now don't skip because you can get a free share in a company like Apple or Greg's. Free Trade is an online investment platform where you can buy and sell shares commission free. As the app shows, there's zero commission. On UK trade, there's absolutely no fees, and on international trade, there's a small exchange rate fee, but there's zero commission. Some people say you need to invest thousands of pounds to get started in investing, but this simply isn't true. Any amount of money you could afford to invest could potentially start earning interest and dividends on stocks and ETFs, compounding in value over the long term. Free Trade also has tons of educational guides and articles on its site that can help you start thinking about investing and the sorts of habits you should be developing. So you can download the Free Trade app by clicking on the link in my description. And once you've created and added funds to your account, you will all receive a random free share worth between £3 and £200. Now I'm still very much learning about which stocks are best for me, but the app has been great as you can easily navigate different categories of stocks and ETFs from green energy, games and cars. It's all in there. Now remember, with all investments, your capital is at risk and the value of your portfolio can go down as well as up. So you may get back less than you invested. This is not investment advice. Make sure you do your own research on what investments are right for you or seek professional advice before investing. Thank you to Free Trade for sponsoring today's video. But let's get back to some more bridge building. So what do we have? Level 1-1 of Polybridge 1. So we're, go we're going to start pretty basic. And although we've got these anchor points down here, I'm just going to do standard truss. I'm even going to auto-triangulate because I am a pro. What the hell? Why didn't that work? <laughs> Don't say I've forgotten how to poly- Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> I was so worried then. I was like, I've forgotten how to build bridges. No, I forgot that piece. Quite a vital piece. There you go. <laughs> Much better. Look at that. And we're in 3D. We're in poly bridge 2. Uh, no leaderboards though, which is a slight downside. But if we go in the gallery, we can see how many people are actually aware of this. Only five pages worth. Interesting. And most people... <laughs> They're all just dangling roads, you bastards. All right, so the next level is a 10 meter simple bridge. So this is just a slightly longer bridge, uh, but we actually have a support in the middle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use that like that, which sort of reminds me of female anatomy. Is that weird? I think that's weird. I think we'll just press play and hope it works. <laughs> All right, come on. Oh, it didn't work. It didn't work. Yeah, I think these probably need to be slightly bigger. So let's see, is this any better? Oh, it's got a, it's got a bit of movement. It's got a bit of movement. Okay, I was trying, I was trying to be clever, yeah, but it looks like we might actually have to do a bit of that. I reckon just one truss will be fine. We, we can have a bit of movement there. That'll be all right. Lovely jubbly. I'll tell you what, I am gonna shave these a little bit. I want to get these like nice and nice and cheap. Even though there's no leaderboards, let's try, let's try and do it cheap. That's pretty good. 5,700, way under the eight grand budget. Sorted, right. Uh, can I sort this by budget? There you go. So as usual, all the cheap ones are dangling road. Cheeky bastards. All right, so level three steps up to a 12 meter bridge. So this one, we're going to build half the bridge and then we're going to go symmetrical on it. So I reckon something like that might be okay. We've sort of just got trusses underneath and it should bring all the force along this. Uh, whether that's strong enough, because we got a taxi this time. It's a little bit heavier. Five polygrams. Normal car's only three. So let's see what happens. They're both going at the same time as well. Bit risky. Oh, easy. Easy. Well under budget. Seven grand. And if you look at this one, turns out a normal truss would have worked as well. I'm quite interested to see how much was a normal truss. So that was a normal truss. It was 8,500. That's over budget. That's why trusses aren't always the best idea. However, it is always better than a dangling road. So, <laughs> so let's go to the next level. So we've got a slanted bridge. This should be easy for an engineer. I'm going to use the line drawing tool and just do that. And it's been a while since we've done this, but I'm feeling 
electricity in my hands to fill in this bridge with road pieces. <laughs> Oh, I've missed the power of engineering, I tell you that much. Yeah, for this, I'm sort of thinking we just do we just do a truss. Over the top, nice and simple. We're stuck to the grid, which probably isn't ideal. Uh, something like that might work. It's got a nice little bit of an arch just to keep the price down. It might be a bit cheap looking at the price, so it might break. No, we're good. We are good. The arched truss. Oh god, look at that truss. <laughs> That's horrible. It's so wonky. Uh, less and less people, so there's only three pages worth of people doing this one. What do we get? 5,100. So we're on the second page. So we're actually in the bottom half. Not ideal. Right, level five, a two-part bridge. Right, so for this one, we got to go up first and then just up again. Okay, that's pretty easy, I think. So we'll fill in with road using our line tool. Lovely job, it. And I think doing our little arched truss should be okay. I'm even going to stick to the grid. I'm not going to go mental on budget for now. So hopefully that will work. I might have to make it a little bit bigger. This one, I'm a little bit concerned. It's a bit steeper. I'm wondering if that's why we have this node down here. I'm sort of thinking if we were to do that. So our good friend, the muscle is back. And then I just need to join to one end. Do I go there? I could just do over the top, actually. So that should be sturdy. It looks like this isn't supported, but it is. It's supported by that. So let's see. Will that do this first one? Oh, 85% stress. And this second one? Oh, easy. That was very nice. I wonder if we could have got away with an overarch there. Oh, so loads more people tried this level. 10 pages worth. I imagine a lot of the people playing this may have just missed the first few levels just because they're a bit simple. Now, our budget was 11 grand, which puts us on page 7 out of 10. That is not good enough. Right, let's retry. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm literally just going to grab this bridge and copy it, but rotate. Let's see. Will this hold? It's a lot cheaper. 9,800. I'm just a bit concerned. That was 85, and this is going to be steeper. It's a bit more force. Oh, it's in the 90s. I think it's okay, though. Look at the max stress. 97.8. <laughs> Uh, let's go see where we are now. 9,800. We're just about on this page. You can see everyone's sort of done a similar design. Uh, so not quite in the top half, but that'll do. That'll do. All right, so level six is called Overbridge. So this one, we have our first look at other vehicles. So we've got a boat that we need to avoid. So we're just going to freehand this. We're not going to use the grid on here at all. So we're going to go over the boat as close to it as possible. Hopefully that won't touch. And then we'll just go, in fact, in fact... I'm going to use my line tool. It's going to be curved with unlocked tangents. So we're going to go from there to there. I'm going to unlock the tangents. And this allows me to like do crazy S-bends. We're going to keep that one pointing up. And we're going to do that sort of thing. So that's what I was trying to hand draw pretty much. But I'll tell you what, for this one, I'm going to call on my scientist friend. So we're going to put this inside this machine. There he is. He's going to press the button. And now if you take a look, just like that, the road has been filled in. Beautiful. <laughs> These scientists aren't that bad. Better than architects. All right, so for this one, we're going to use this block here as our sort of midpoint. So we're going to have that sort of thing. We're going to be going over the top. All right, I'm not too confident about this one. You usually don't want this sort of shape, like right angle triangles. You really want like equilateral because that spreads the force evenly. Uh, so this could be a bit of a disaster, but let's just see what happens. Oh my god, there are two boats stacked on top of each other. Was that in the first game? I don't I don't know about that. Uh, oh, look. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a little bit wobbly in this middle bit. Because uh, essentially this is, this is a hinge. And this is a hinge. And that's a hinge, to be honest. So we sort of want another piece like that. So that will keep things nice and rigid. However, it will cost a lot more. We're up to 9,500 out of our 16 grand budget. Uh, but I think that should have fixed it. Yes, it has. Nice. And looking at the other player solutions, I'm quite confident. We might have done well there first time. So ours is 9,500. <gasps> We're nearly on the first page. Right, so we've got to get under 9,400 to beat the first page. I tried not to look at those designs. I reckon I can pretty much just shrink these trusses a bit. Here we're on 9,200 now. Oh, easy. Easy. 9,200. We're on the first page. That's what I am talking about. Right, on to the next level. Ah, oh, so this is simple jump. The first time we ever did a jump in a Polybridge game. And look, we've actually got springs. Now, there weren't springs in Polybridge 1. That was a completely Polybridge 2 thing. Also, we've only got five roads on this. Interesting. All right, so looking at these two guys, I'm a little bit scared because I know the moped man with the massive legs. He's not very fast usually, but if we hover over, you can see his speed is 18 meters a second, which is fast. So potentially just a normal jump 
will actually be fine. I'm going to do three bits of road. We've got a budget of 9,000. So let's try that. I'm not sure how it will do. Oh, it's not quite far enough. Let's add another bit of road. That's not road, Matt. That's wood. <laughs> I've been playing this for over a year. All right, so let's see. Will that hold? I'm a bit worried that might break. Yeah, with the car. I thought so. All right, so as this piece broke... We need to make this stronger. Now, we don't have steel or any other materials to make it stronger. We've only got wood. So what we're going to do, we're going to do that. And essentially, that means the force that was coming down here is now spread between two pieces. So we've almost made this twice as strong by essentially removing half the force through there. All right, so if we play this now, is it going to make it? Oh, oh no. <laughs> They're getting a Wilhelm scream. So they were close. I don't think we can make our jump any bigger. What we're going to do, we're going to use a bit of road down here. We're going to do a little bit of a sneaky Folly Bridge 2 technique. We're going to spring under there. And then we're going to give that a bit of a compressed look. So that's 100% compressed, which means it should double in size, meaning the road sort of should sit there. That just makes it a bit cheaper because you're using less spring. Think about it. Oh, and look at that. Lovely. Oh, an endo to finish. Uh, so our price was just under 8,000. Oh, the first page is cheap. It's very cheap. But there's 18 pages. People love this level. All right, so we're on the ninth page, which means we're just about in the top half. We'll take that. I'm going to assume most of the people that know about this are like the hardcore polybridge players. They've played every level. They want a fresh challenge. And I have not played every level yet. I know, sacrilege. But I really want to try this out because polybridge won. Back to basics. All right, so this is level eight of Polybridge 1 campaign, we've got to get over this red thing. This is going to be a massive ship that comes flying through. I'll tell you what, we're going to snap the grid on. We're going to come down here. We're going to do a straight line to there. We're going to fill that in with road. And then we're going to build our bridge on this side. And then we'll just mirror it over there. Save us some time. All right, so for this level, we actually have an extra material. We've got steel. We've only got six pieces of steel. And steel is a lot stronger than wood, but I'm going to try and use wood uh, because it's a lot cheaper. It's a lot cheaper. So I'm sort of thinking an under truss and then we put that in there. So what I've done here, I've put this right against the wall. I can't move that any closer. And what that does, that essentially makes like an anchor point. So when this is all connected, all the weight of the bridge on here will come along this piece of wood and it'll press against that side, which hopefully should be strong. Let's mirror this and we'll see if that works. I'm not convinced, actually. I feel like this might get crushed. So we might have to put like a triangle truss over the top. Now that is holding. Will it take the weight of the car? Oh, no. Can you see it just started to twist there? And that's because these are acting as hinges. This is just a hinge. This can, like, move all about the place. If we were to put something like that in, and that stops this moving. This one's still a hinge, but this one cannot move anymore. All right, so if we watch this one, so we're coming over. Force is pretty high, but we're good. We are good. And now our big old boat is coming. Question is, will it fit? Oh, no, it didn't fit. <laughs> Hang on. I just move these top two points up a little bit. So hopefully as this boat comes now, it should fit underneath. Yes, lovely. A little bit of clipping there, but all good. Do we have the strength to hold the taxi? The taxi is heavier. Oh, no. Okay, so that was close. But uh, there's a lot of force coming down here. It was a bit like bumpy as it got the speed. So I'm thinking if we mirror this onto that side. So that will strengthen both sides. There's now no movement allowed at all. I'm still a bit worried about this flexing, but uh, we will see. Come on, taxi. Oh, the stress is so high. <laughs> right, so we had a few more fails. What I've done, I've added a bit of a truss on top because these bits of road were breaking. And by adding a truss on top, you're strengthening the whole thing. So you're turning it into a triangle. And with the taxi, we just about made it. So our budget there was 14 grand, which is 10 grand under the 24 grand budget. Now let's go see how we did in the gallery. Now some of these are pretty similar, actually. Again, symmetrical is usually the way you want to do this. Uh, but we're on the second page, so I will take that. And we're actually at the point where some of these levels get quite interesting. So let's go to the very end. And let's see some of these weird ones. This looks cool. Look at this. So it's a proper trust arch with like a suspension thing holding the bridge. That's really cool. 20 grand, still under budget as well. I am surprised by that. Now this one makes use of the anchor points and it uses rope along here in tension to sort of hold the two trusses up. Very nice. And then quite a few people have done it like this where they've finished their bridge there. So the cars just drop down. So that sort of reduces how much road you need. It also reduces how many cars are likely to use this because uh, <laughs> you don't want to end up like that. Level 9, Paddle Boat Drawbridge. Ooh. So this is our first drawbridge. 
first use of hydraulics. However, being a polybridge veteran, I don't know if I can call myself a veteran really. Uh, but I sort of know hydraulics are expensive. So if we look at this, you can see wood is $180 per meter. Hydraulics, $750 a meter. That's expensive. So the key is to try and avoid using hydraulics. I know it's a bit weird, but uh, let's fill this in with road. And you'll see exactly my thoughts along here to avoid using hydraulics. So we do a bit of an under truss, heading to an over truss, back to an under. So I'm thinking something along these lines. So we're on seven grand there. So if I bring these down nice and flat, that's 6,800. We're still on the grid as well. I haven't really played about with these. But if that's strong enough, you can sort of see how that works. And that we, we haven't made a drawbridge. We haven't used the very expensive hydraulics. We just go over the boat. And then our cars sort of drop off there. As long as they land on their wheels, uh, I will call that a success. So uh, let's go. So blue car straight up and over. How's the drop off going to be? Or oh, onto his front wheels, but all good. And the boat comes under. You can see it fits under. No need to use hydraulics. And then will this hold the taxi? That is the main question. Yes. Lovely. So 6,800. Where are we in the gallery? Look at that. We are on the first page. Uh, first page out of seven, so decent. That's what you get for ignoring the hydraulics. Now let's go take a look at some designs that did use the hydraulics. So I think this is the cheapest one that did use hydraulics. So what does this do? Ooh, a nice little... Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. So that was a cool little way of doing a drawbridge there. Very nice. Uh, we got this one, which sort of lifts up the entire bridge. Okay, that's quite cool. That is really cool. Yeah, so I feel like this was probably one of the more obvious solutions that people may have gone for. Hydraulic on both sides, lifting up the entire bridge. Classic drawbridge style. I think I probably would have done something like this one initially. Although mine would have gone up rather than down. But if that works, that does work. <laughs> right, so on the last page, what do we have here? A crisscross of hydraulics. Oof, look at that. <laughs> Okay, that's cool. Slightly over-engineered solution there, but I like it. Oh, what is this mess? <laughs> Someone's put gaps in their bridge. Why? Why? There's so much wood. <laughs> oh, I gotta love it. Gotta love it. No hydraulics in that one, but still bloody expensive. Good work. All right, so this one is very unique looking. It's nearly all hydraulics. It's gonna move a lot. Whoa. Okay, that was unexpected, but I like it. It's a bit architectural, I will give you that, but it has a purpose. <laughs> so I think you're allowed that one, train man. Good work. Uh, quite intrigued by this. The upside down cat. Oh, look. <laughs> nice. And then ready? Boing. That's quite tidy. That reminds me of like an Arglin solution. Yeah, and then we've just got an arch to look at from Snoopy. It's a bit zoomed out. But uh, if you can if you can squint and try and make out the blurs, we've got a nice arch and it sort of lifts up the bridge in the middle. All right, so this is level 10 of Polybridge 1. And I think this was where it's a bit confusing because you're like, oh, look, there's a star. That's cool. Anyway, I'll build my bridge. And you sort of go about building a bridge as you do. And like, right, I built my two bridges. Let's uh, let's go. Let's go for the flag. Come on, we've got this. And you get there and you're like, oh, bollocks. It's a checkpoint. It's not just a star. So start again. So what you got to do on this one, you've got to surprisingly go through the checkpoint. So we fill that in and we decide we want to go underneath. We've got we've got an anchor point down here. We may as well use it. So if we do something like that, I've just sort of tried to truss on my other side. I don't I don't mind there being hinges there because I don't suspect there'll be too much movement. I just want to keep it cheap. And if we flip that to the other side, maybe that will work. We're 7,500 of our 11 and a half grand budget. So will that work? Oh, that went up to 90 something, but we got the checkpoint We're coming down. Yes. Ooh, that could be cheap. Max stress, 94%. Nice. Seven and a half grand. We're, up, we're in the middle somewhere. Middle of the pack. That's not bad considering a lot of the people that do these sorts of levels. They use dangling roads, which is just cheating in my book. And like that taxi. <laughs> Does that really count? Now, what is this solution? That oh, look. See, no, that just... No, that doesn't count. That is not engineering. That is architecture to the highest degree. Laggy! I'm not happy with you. So yes, we've done the first 10 levels of Polybridge 1 in Polybridge 2. And we've done them under budget without any breaks occurring as well. So I'm pretty happy with that. So if you guys want to see me carry on Polyception... 
the Polybridge 1 campaign in Polybridge 2. Uh, please boost the old like button. Let me know that you're enjoying this. Uh, leave a little comment. Was it a nice flashback to Polybridge 1 if you played that? But anyway, from me, that's Peace, Love and Bridges. And I'll catch you guys next time. See you guys. Bye.